Thank you guys for joining us again for another Cupid's Corner with John and Sharice, owners of Titan Medical Center. So today we want to bring up a big, big one, okay? This is a huge one, right? Huge. All right. So this one is pick your battles. When you're in a relationship, those battles can be everywhere, right? <laughs> and, you know, you always go with the old saying, always choose the battles that you're gonna fight. And the reason you wanna do this is because you don't wanna expend all your energy on every single battle. You gotta really pick and choose those battles. What are the most important things to you? Those should be the battles that you wanna fight, all right? Or you wanna stick up for, if it's an opinion or something that you really, really want in the relationship. And I think that's what me and Sharice, you know, we, we went through these things and I've always told her, hey, listen, pick your battles, right? Yeah, he actually has told me, pick your battles a lot. He's a little bit older than me and not much, okay? Because there's not that, there's not that many difference, okay? It's not 10, okay? But you do have to pick and choose your battles. Now, when I first met John, now remember, when I first met John, I was 21 years old. And I was, I mean, you think I'm a firecracker now? I was a firecracker then. And I did not pick battles. And if I, I mean, my battles were every five minutes. Like, if, you, if I didn't like something you did, I was picking a battle with you, with you, with you, with you. And it just, it just, it wouldn't stop. So finally he sat me down one day and said, listen, you have got, and it wasn't even about him. It's like, you've got to pick and choose your battles of what you want to do here because, you know, you're just flipping out on everybody pretty much. And I'm like, okay, so, I mean, what, what am I supposed to do? And that's when he told me, you know, just pick the big things. If you can let it slide, then let it slide. And then I just happened to apply that to our relationship, which worked out pretty good, okay? Because it's good when you pick and choose your battles. Yeah, I mean, so honestly, you want to be, you know, as open and upfront with your partner as possible. So don't hold things back that are going to build animosity, but pick and choose your battles. Uh, you know, if it's if it's one thing that your partner does that you know you can live with, there's nothing crazy. Don't go off on them. Or even when you're out in public, it, you know, there's a million things you see that might make you angry. If it doesn't really directly affect you or is not going to hurt somebody or your, you know yourself then you really shouldn't bother with it all the time. And there's just certain things that you might interject with, but majority of things, don't involve yourself. The reason is you're gonna cause yourself stress, which could possibly raise cortisol levels, which can cause a whole bunch of health problems, make you fat, you know, not feel good. So that's one thing. Your blood pressure, that's gonna rise usually, right? That's what yeah. I tell Sharice all the time. Uh, your face gets red, you get all mad, uh, at that point, that's not good for you either. It's a silent killer, blood pressure, okay? So blood pressure you wanna keep in check. So that's another thing that will raise when you start raising more battles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pick and choose what's gonna be important to you. So the things that you know ultimately will affect you, those are the battles you should be fighting. And I think that if you only you know concentrate your energy on those battles, you're gonna win the war, right? Because you have more firepower, you're, you're, you're ready to go and you're, you're tuned in to just that battle and just that war, um, instead of just spreading yourself too thin, okay? And you don't wanna do that, so that, that's a big one. Don't go and try to fight every battle because you're ultimately gonna lose some of those battles and you might even lose the war. And my example to that is, is if you fight with your partner about everything, everything, everything. The dog was in here, uh, you didn't do the dishes, um, you didn't take me out to eat. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You didn't do this. It's gonna make your your partner feel possibly insecure, inferior to you know to your relationship, um, and that they can never do good in your eyes. If you tell somebody all the time negative, 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 they're gonna get that and they're gonna feel like that. And that's why you know people that are negative or toxic that come around you, you can feel those people. Mm -hmm. They bring negativity to you all the time. I don't care if it's shining, the sun's shining or not shining, it, it's negative. And, and you, you ultimately, you pull that vibe in and that's how you start feeling. So you don't wanna be that with your partner. And it's, it's, it's the best policy to be honest with your partner if something's really bothering you. But if it's not really bothering you and you don't want to make your partner feel bad about everything that they do, um, then and if, they, if you do feel bad about everything your partner does, then maybe you shouldn't be with that partner. That might not be the right partner. I see a lot of forced relationships out there for different reasons, and, and that's just not right either. But 
with this, if you love your partner, you truly, really like your partner, you're going to pick and choose your battles, and you're not going to go off on them on every little thing. You can honestly, I mean, there are secrets to this, guys. You can honestly kind of work your way around it. So say, for instance, let's just say, John's never done this, so I'm going to leave him out of this. But let's just say somebody put the toilet paper roll, instead of it going this way, oh, yeah. it goes this way. Yeah. And you're like, oh my goodness, this is terrible, it's going this way, and yeah. every time I do it, it's not yeah. rolling the right way, and oh my god, I, I just can't stand you. So you could fix it, and then you could tell them, maybe in a general conversation, with, it could be anywhere, you could be at dinner, you could be out somewhere, or whatever, in the car, you guys are driving together, and just randomly bring up something that's totally not about the topic you guys are talking about and just work it in there and be like oh my goodness can you believe this people that put the toilet paper roll going this way versus that way and you know then it's gonna click hopefully if your partner is smart enough to pick up on little things like this but then maybe they'll apply it thinking like oh shoot yeah actually I do do that you know so it's it's there's a the little tiny little secrets you can put in where you can kind of interject some of your personal thoughts and let them know like how you're feeling without being you know attacking them all the time because you know i will say we're on the defensive it's yeah another one right listen guys I, I i can't tell you enough like when i was in my early 20s i would fight about everything i mean to this day i still i would be happy to fight about everything so you know i do pick and choose my battles now there's some things i just don't go for at all and then there's some things i've learned to deal with let it slide because it's not going to kill me or affect my you know affect my life so you know thanks for that yeah you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> that brings me to the next one nobody's perfect you're not perfect i'm not perfect she thinks she is but she's not perfect no it's not. okay <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> anyway, but nobody's perfect. So everybody has flaws. You know, whether it's a physical flaw, a mental flaw, something, you know, in their life has went wrong. Um, you know, or just, it just is what it is. We're not perfect. Nobody is. Everybody strives to be. You might want to be perfect, but you never will be perfect. No matter how much plastic surgery you get, how much education you get, um, you know, whatever you do business-wise, it, it, it's not going to make you perfect. But you can try to be the best possible you, right? Um, and that's looking at your partner too. So when you look at your partner and you're starting to get with your partner, um, when you start to like them or start spending more time with them, you're going to learn more about them, learn more about their quirks, you know, how they live, uh, what they eat, you know, what makes them tick. You don't know people until you live with them. Really, that that's a true statement too. So, <laughs> you know, when, when you learn to to love your partner, I guess, you'll learn these imperfections of your partner. You'll accept and, it. And, and you'll accept it. You'll actually like those imperfections. That will bring you guys closer together. Um, but remember, you know, because I come across a lot of people these days, and they're like, I want this, 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 this. And in a perfect world, that might be acceptable, and you might get that. But we're not in a perfect world. So there might be a couple flaws that go with all the perfections that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. It might be one or two. Now, are those imperfections, um, are they that bad where you just don't want to be with that person? That's fine. But can you live with those little imperfections because all the other things work? You know, honestly, that's a really good analogy to when you're looking for a house because we're kind of sort of looking for a new place to live closer to the office. But if it has, let's just say, I'm looking for a two-story house, I want a pool, I want a big kitchen, big island, I want to make sure this room's huge, I want a big tub and a walk-in closet, I need it to be this big, but let's just say, oh man, it's going to be a one-story house it doesn't have this towel that I want really you kind of work with it because it has a majority of what you're looking for and then you just work with the rest you know you can work with it you guys got to make sure that you work with it there's nothing in life that's perfect I wish it was um, but there definitely isn't you might be able to improve on some things too uh, some of those imperfections you might be able to improve them and it might be better to you like along the time and along the way you know that's just one thing you're gonna have to live with and deal with um, is those imperfections and like I said if it's not a deal breaker for you guys you guys will be happy um, but don't make some don't take your perception of how this person should be and put them in that category because that might not be them they might not be that person they might have those imperfections that you're putting in this box that they don't have um, I see it all the time and you might you might think uh, you know celebrities 
and, and celebrities are perfect, right? We put them on this pedestal sometimes because we don't know the real, real them. So we think this person's like this. And I, I've had this, I've, I've encountered this amongst a couple celebrities where I had this perception, they're this, this, this godlike figure and meet them and be let down. Mm-hmm. You know, because I had this perception, this person was perfect. And, and me, myself, I thought about it, you know, and you know, afterwards I'm like, well, nobody's perfect. They're humans just like us. Doctors are humans, lawyers are humans, I'm human, she is. Athletes are, they get thrown in the spotlight all the time. You have this perception that a football player, because he runs a thousand yards uh, in a season, this guy is the ultimate best, he's your best fantasy football player, he's a part of your home, home team, but then something wrong, something bad happens. Whether you know these guys, you know drugs, or you know they beat up a girl, or whatever it may be, and you have this perception, you're like, man, I thought this guy was perfect, but then you see these imperfections in this person, um, and then you perceive them in a whole different light, in a whole different way. So nobody's perfect. Give people a second chance. Well, Sometimes you accept them for who they are. You accept them for who they are. 100. percent Like you know, as far as now, John, don't settle. Right? He, he didn't settle with me now, but I tell you something. One thing he's let me go on, because I do tell all of my girlfriends this, is that, you know, he's like, okay, she's beautiful, she's smart, she can make some money, she's a business partner, she was worker, 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 but man, the woman doesn't cook. She doesn't cook, and she doesn't do these home activities. So he lets me slide, and I actually, I, I mean, I do recognize these things, so yeah. it's yeah. appreciative. Yeah. So accept people for who they are. Nobody's perfect. Try to be the best you. Don't settle though. So that's another thing. So now if people have a lot of imperfections and these are red flag imperfections, don't settle for that. So if you think you're gonna settle for something because of one aspect of their life is perfect, let's say they have a whole bunch of money mm-hmm. and you think that's the perfect thing for me and you get in your relationship and there's a lot of negative things that happen. And you see that all the time too. That one positive thing, those negative things outweigh that positive thing by a million times and you shouldn't be in that relationship. So don't put yourself in bad situations and bad relationships with a lot of imperfections. If there are a lot of imperfections that might not be the person for you, you should move on. Don't force things. Just reevaluate it. Thanks again for joining us for Cupid's Corner, our segment in helping you revive or revitalize your relationship and make things a lot, lot better for you and your partner. Join us every Sunday, 11 a.m. here on ABC for Cupid's Corner and more segments to help you with your healthy lifestyle from Titan Medical Center. This is John, I'm Sharice, and we will see you there.